You're tuned to IMTV, the works. We're down here in Kennedy's and the Underground, and it's Big Dish Go's fourth birthday party. We're going to rock inside and check out the man himself, Charles Siegling. But first of all, let's have a chat with a few people. Come on. How are you doing, guys? Good. What's Thanks. your names? Sarah, Ali, Elaine. And he's here especially for Tech Nation. Yeah. 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 Is this your first time seeing Charles Siegling? No. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. And what yeah. do you think? It's amazing. And you've seen him before? Yeah, but I don't know where. You don't know where? <laughs> That's a good one. I've seen him, but I don't know where. Did you dream it or did you actually do it? It could have been a dream. It could have been a dream, but quite possibly. What about you? It's my first time. Uh, do you use, I use regulars for Big Dish Go. Uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. What's been your favourite act so far that you've seen at Big Dish Go? You. Me. <laughs> I like it. I love it. Fantastic. Uh, can you top that? No. No. So it's still me. And what about you? Yeah. You can top it. So no. you can top it with something better than me. I say no. Yeah. I say no. no, it's still no, you. No, it's still me. I love it. Dermo rules. Let's go and see Charles Siegling. <laughs> Are they as fanatical as they are in Europe? Are they, are they, are they it's as crazy it's or is very, it different? different? It is different. I mean, we succeeded in establishing this, uh, this la these two labels that I have, Technesia and Sino, uh, which are based in Hong Kong. We, we succeeded in estab establishing them worldwide, you know. Uh, but honestly, we, we've been running a few nights in Hong Kong and also in mainland China. We used to have a, a radio show as well in China back in the 90s. Um, it's very difficult because um, it's a simple reason, basically. In the 90s, there was no record shops in Asia. Yeah. So people never got to learn this music in the same way as we learned it in Europe. Right. By going to clubs in America, by having resident DJs playing the, the latest, uh, latest cool tunes, you know, cool techno track or cool ass tracks, you know. They never got to know that. So the only thing they get is imported CD through HMV of, uh, I don't know, uh, Ministry of Sound, Best of Tucson, uh, Best of <laughs> Sound, you know, whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah. This kind of thing. So in the end, it goes more, I mean, I have nothing against that, okay? Everybody's got to do what they, what they have to do and what they like, you know? But in the end, it went more mainstream. So basically in Asia, aside Japan, uh, the big clubs usually play trance or commercial house music or new rave, you know, this, uh, this kind of headbanger sound, you know? It's true that techno, house, uh, tech house, this kind of underground sound, which is more like for clubbers, you know, yes. doesn't really exist or it exists in very small, uh, small scale events, you know, maybe, uh, maybe similar to what you find in Dublin, like three, four hundred people clubs, which are actually very cool. Yeah. You know? I actually played in Hong Kong like a month ago, you know, it's a small club, 200 people. People went totally mad, you know, because you get really the crowd that go for this kind of music. So. It's, it's like fighting against a uh, dragon, if you want to make some kind of imagery, you know. It's, it's nearly impossible to convince the Asian crowd that uh, that there is something else than uh, pop music and R&B and uh, trends, you know. Yeah. But throughout the years, now especially with the digital, the digital era, it's much easier to get access to any kind of music yes. on the internet from everywhere around the world. So it's quite it's a bit easier these days. You know? and, um, so, w would you prefer to play in a big club, or would you prefer like the likes of tonight, a small intimate club where you can kind of high five the clubbers on the, uh, over the DJ box? Or would you like to be? Oh, oh, okay, who wouldn't like to stand in front of thirty thousand people and have them all screaming? But as a preference of a DJ, would you prefer the, the smaller or the bigger? <laughs> Depends what you're talking about. If it's for the personal satisfaction, I would say, of course, being in front of uh, a lot of people, like, yeah. 
dozen thousand, you know, it's great, you know. Yeah. For your own ego, it's like, oh, oh. I love you. <laughs> you know, no, I'm joking, but, you know, it's true, personal satisfaction as a DJ, it's like, it's amazing to play in this kind of big festival on the main stage, you know. But there's nothing more challenging than a small club. Yeah. Because this is where you, there's no bullshit, basically, between you and the people. So if you're a shit DJ, you're a shit DJ. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You won't there's make, no escaping. Exactly, you won't make the party happen, you know. Cool. So, I would say, I would go more for the small parties because uh, I like the challenge. Yeah. I like to always convince people that, you know, I do that because I really love it and I try to do it as best as I can. So I would say it's more times. I think you did that tonight as well. It was a, it was a, it was a good, it was a good <laughs> response tonight. Yeah, good feedback. Everybody, good. everybody really loved that, <laughs> myself included. Um, so with, with the ever-changing dance music, the way it's going now with minimal and techno and who, who's, what producers are out there that's kind of catching your eye at the moment and who, who would you be looking at kind of, yeah, they're doing really... I'm very picky, I'm very, very, yeah. very difficult with music, you know, um, um, especially with electronic music, I mean, I've been in this business for, for quite a long time now and uh, I've seen a lot of people, a lot of different style of records, music, whatever, labels, so honestly, it's, nothing really, really surprised me because everything is recycling, but um, I... I was not so much into that, that minimal trend that there was like two, three years ago, or three, four years ago. Because I felt that all the people that were doing this kind of music didn't, were not really DJs. They were just like... Uh, just following the trend really is yeah, where, where it was going. Or, or just like some nerdy guys in Berlin uh, buying Ableton and making tweaks okay. with plugins, you know. But in the end, it sounds cool, it's true. Yeah. Uh, there's some very nice tracks, but it was not really made for clubs. And no, no, we, no. we really lost some kind of energy, some kind of intensity in clubs, you know. And the good thing about this last one year is that it seems that uh, minimal is dying. And Slowly, thank yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, and techno and house are coming back. Coming back, yeah. People are going back to their roots. So <laughs> whatever kind of music they uh, they like, you know, whether it's more like disco house or like like actually Your Wish Born is one of my uh, favorite producer. I really like what he does yeah. these days, um, which is more housey, more more funky, but very well made, you know. Um, I think today this, it's good because people are again able to, you know, be to be open to different kind of music, not only one style and one one fashion or one trend or something. You know? I hate trends. Right. Yeah. I, I hate when everybody goes into one direction. Yeah. Because I, I think uh, the good thing about electronic music is that any single kid on this planet can get uh, cracked software and cracked plugins and become a superstar in one year. That's the magic of it, you know, and not even with the help of a record label or anything really on its own, so that, that's the magic of it, it's open to everybody, and if it's open to everybody, it means that everybody can bring their own idea, their own style, and these last 25 years of electronic music, everybody was able to take it, work on, you make experimental techno, you know, you have your public, you make commercial house, you have your public, and these last few years was like, no, if you don't play in Berlin, if you're not like, a style like that, or something, you know, uh, sorry, you're out of it, you know, and we all know that's, 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 that's not true, you know, but because at the end, the only thing that counts is, is the crowd, the people paying, paying, paying at the, the door to the, the, doors, the clubs, yeah. you know, and the, these people pay to enjoy in the park. But um, it's why I'm, I'm quite happy the last one year. I think uh, even in terms of production uh, and people that you can hear uh, making records like Jerome Sidemann and this kind of people, you know, they are really um, making interesting music and there's a lot of people going for this interest. I noticed when you were on the decks tonight, you had your iPod yeah. connected to yeah. the mixer. What was I have some uh, little sound effects. Uh, with and the, is that an iPhone application that comes yeah, in? Yeah, well, I was just like running through a few uh, sound applications in the iPhone, like mm. in the App Store, you know, and just found out that application, like doing white noise and stuff like that. You know? Cool. So, you know, sometimes you need that. I, I'm very technical, you know, I like to play with three yes. decks, I like to do uh, cuts and stuff, so. Sometimes there is, you have your tracks going, you have your break, and you just wish that you had this a little, bit little thing that made yeah. people like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and little sound effects really help. Yeah. Um, a lot of DJs do that today with uh, tractor, you know, with yeah. computers, but I don't like to play with computers. Um, I play with computers when I play live, but when I DJ, I like, I'm old school, you know, I like to have, you know, my Everything records, there, you know, front, you know. I like to touch something and put it in the machine. So. What would you prefer though? Would you like, to, would you, how do you like, compared to DJing live or to, you know, Oh, um, or to DJing, uh, uh, doing a DJ set, what, what would you prefer now? Would you rather go out and do a live set? And, you know, it must be a nice feeling to play your own tracks that you've created totally, and, yeah. then, and then do like little loops and remixes with them but, in the set. Mm, I like to play live in big festivals. Yeah. Um, I don't, 
I, I like to play live in clubs as well, but it's not the same feeling. I know exactly what to do in a club, whether it's small or big, you know. Uh, I know exactly what to do when I DJ. But when I, when I play live, it's because you play your own music, it's all or nothing, you know. Yeah. Uh, you have a chance that you will never be able to catch the crowd because maybe you play techno, but they want house or take house. Or maybe you play a bit more soft, but they want uh, hard yeah, techno, right. you know. Yeah. You know, so when you DJ, you can adapt very easily, you know. And uh, I'm very open to many different kind of music, so.